So we're walking up to the cabin. We just got here through our 16 mile cross trek from the pond to Lake Iliamna. And we're just getting a few errands done here. Um, and uh, one of those errands is uh, getting some, uh, checking on fuel, uh, charging the Garmin's. We're gonna try and leave here a little bit to head across the, head across the lake and then down the river. So, oh, look at this. Look at this, everybody. Got some uh, cabbage in there. And um, I'm guessing Brussels sprouts, cabbage, um, parsley, and lettuce. Look at that. Look at that. So I gotta go up here into the cabin, I guess. There's supposed to be some awesome stuff in here. Dad moved here in 1934. And this makes the 83rd year that we've been hauling commercial fishing boats. Wow. So it's kind of been a family project. Some guys wanted to take a shortcut, so 1938 dad started helping them out. It's just kind of kept getting bigger and bigger. Now it's like, how do we do it all? But we manage. Yeah, the, the road just going through and the different terrain you had to pass through and, and uh, different, your average road. So were you like born he, right here or? My oldest brother and sister were born in Seldovia. Okay. My next older brother and sister were born at Williamsport, the other end of the road. Oh, okay. Shall we stop this conversation? <laughs> And you were born halfway in between when they were trying to get you here, right? I was born in Missouri. <laughs> Missouri? The folks went down on vacation. That's where my mom was from. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so I tell everybody I wasn't born in Alaska, but I was made in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is terrific. Um, any cool story you want to share? I, there's a ton, I suppose. Oh, there's probably a ton of them, that's right. Well, yeah. we've gone from hauling the boats on their side on a flatbed trailer to... Yeah, the boat hauling has changed a lot over the years. My dad hauled them on a flat trailer. It was only 24 feet long, and then he laid them up. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm kind of recovering from open heart surgery. So oh, I, wow. We better keep, keep this rolling and get her done then. <laughs> Might be the last. <laughs> and uh, he used to haul them on a 24 foot deck trailer, laid them on their side. Well, in those days, up until a few years ago, we had to go across the LAM River on another bridge. Well, the problem with that bridge was it was only 12 foot to yeah, 12, two and a half inches wide. Oh. And the boats in Bristol Bay, you know, they're limited on length, right. but not on width. Mm-hmm. So they got wider, but my bridge never did. Oh, okay. So in 03, they made a temporary bridge. Temporary meaning it was supposed to be five years. It was more like 15. Whoa. But anyway, we used that, and then that started getting the boats bigger. And then they built that new bridge over the LAM River and helped a lot, but we still have the one bridge at the foot of the mountain there that we have to squeeze through a little bit. But otherwise, you know, we build our own trailers and kind of developed them over the years and move them up right now. Before, with that overhead bridge, once we got to the LAM River, we had to take down all the antennas, all the lights, all the flying Oh wow. all that stuff had to come off. Because you're hauling it sideways and you didn't want to get it caught on all the brush. Well, there was a, a cover on the bridge. Oh. And so we had to strip it down so it would squeeze through. <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> You're talking about stories. I had a couple of boats that uh, I took a chainsaw and cut the pilot houses off. So no, you did too, because they were too tall. Oh my word! Yeah, they they said we're not going around and making fit, so we did. <laughs> you weren't involved putting them back together then, were you? Oh yes, I was down here on one in particular. What we did is just took strips of plywood and covered it with like 5200 and screwed it on the sides and then that waterproofed the whole inside. Oh. I don't know what the guys did after fishing season. They must have <laughs> fixed them. I never saw the boats again. They figured that was enough trouble. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's been quite a lucrative business. It's been jumping around as far as the numbers, like in the 90s, there was one year I hauled four boats. Mm. Just four. Wow. Last year we hauled 282. Wow. So it has changed a little over the years. So what is the um, stated here? So if you go go start 19 whatever, what's the like the family tree line name then? So your what was it? Your your grandpa? It was my dad that your, started. So your dad and his name was. Carl. Carl Williams, and that was in 1938. 38. Yeah. That's the first boat. Yeah. That was the first boat, and then you then you took over in. Well, 70. I, I started helping in the Five. 60s, and Dad walked out the door in full retirement in 75. Oh, okay. But I had started hauling boats well, shortly after we were married. We were married in 72, 72. so yeah, yeah right about that same period of time. And and remind the, the viewers again of what your name is again. Ray Williams. Ray Williams. And you had Chet. Chet's my son. Chet the son. And now does he have a son? Uh, yeah, he does. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thank you very much for your information. You bet. No problem. Wow, what an interview with Ray and Linda Williams. <laughs> the stories he shared that I didn't even put on the camera really cool really cool um, yeah house was gorgeous inside I didn't do video I just did some pictures I didn't want to intrude but uh, wood burner in there um, nice wood burner uh, appeared um, oven stove as well um, tile floors um, gorgeous wood inside you know log cabin um, quite a few pets tremendous amount of head mounts of many 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 different animals um, but yeah that was Ray and Linda Williams and then their son Chet is the one who um, earlier did I did an interview with and amazingly enough Chet has a kid and it's a boy so I think it's gonna continue